Wow, what an early Christmas present from Pico Labs. I finally got invited to test out Pico Labs 1.0, and let me tell you, it is amazing. The best part is it's web-based and has unlimited free access for now. About four or five months ago, I introduced you to Pico Labs via Discord, which is still available for everyone. Today, I will be showcasing Pico Labs 1.0, accessed via your web browser, and showing you all its excellent features and fantastic AI-generated videos. Unfortunately, it is invite-only, so you'll need to sign up and apply, but I got invited within a week, so it is best to get in and apply now. But don't worry, you'll still be able to access Pico Labs via Discord, which is still free and amazing as well. So, let's jump right in. Once you log in on the homepage, you are greeted with some example videos. You'll be able to see the prompts used to give you an idea or base to go off of. Towards the bottom, you have a text input to describe your story, where you'll write your prompt. You can drag and drop a video or image here to use an image or video as a reference. Here, you can adjust your aspect ratio and frames per second. This video icon lets you adjust the camera controls and your motion strength. The knob slider icon or controller icon lets you adjust the negative prompt, seed, and consistency with the text. Overall, the new Pika Labs 1.0 is wonderfully minimalistic and sleek. I'm a big fan. Its simplicity is key. Yet, while the interface is straightforward and user-friendly, the videos it produces are incredibly impressive and anything but basic. I will begin with the default settings and try out to prompt a cyborg video editing on a desktop PC. Let's see how it goes. Very nice. Here we have the retry button. You will be able to reroll this same prompt again to try your luck with a different generation using the same settings and prompt. With prompt, that button is self-explanatory. You can use the same settings but enter a different prompt. The edit button will allow you to adjust the video. I'll get back to that in a second. Here, with the three button icon, you'll have two options. First, add four seconds to this clip to extend the video duration. The second option is to upscale the video. Incredibly, Pika Labs offers these two options, but it gets better. Remember, I said I'd get back to the edit button. Well, click Clicking the edit button reveals another two features you can use with the new Pico Labs 1.0 system. Clicking the edit button will reveal two new modifiers. The first is this modify region button. This will allow you to alter a specific region of the video. Next, we have the expand canvas button. This will allow you to extend the canvas and fill in a new video section. By increasing the width and height of the video, you will be able to select different aspect ratios. Also, previously, I clicked on the retry button, and here are the results. Let's try out this modify region button. I'm going to modify the head of the cyborg. I'll change the prompt to a full metal helmet. Let's see how this works. Nice. As you can see, when I selected the head region of the video and used the prompt full metal helmet, it kept everything the same from the first video and just modified the head of the cyborg into a full metal helmet. Now let's take a look at expand canvas. Since I want to continue off of the modified region video we just did, I'll click this trash bin icon to remove the first video and simply click on edit under this newer video. Now we can go ahead and click expand canvas. I'm going to switch this to a 9 by 16 ratio. It could be challenging because it means filling in extra space. Let's go for it and see how it turns out. After all, it's free, and we have unlimited tries, so this is the perfect time to experiment and see how things work out. Just a heads up, I'm editing this video so the generations aren't as instant as they appear. But rest assured, I'm showing you the exact results without selectively choosing any frames. Here's the expanded canvas output. The results might not be flashy, but they show what Pika Labs 1.0 can do. We can achieve even better results with improved prompts and guided image features. But for now, I'm just covering the basics of Pika Labs. We'll dive into the more advanced generations and share some tips and tricks soon. Let me revert to our first generation by clicking on our first generated video and clicking reprompt. I will regenerate this first output, but I'll try it out using a negative prompt. But first, let me use the same seed, so the only thing affecting this new generation will be the new negative prompt that I will use. To discover the seed of a generated video, click this information icon here. It will pop up the details of your settings. We can copy our seed now. So next, I will click on our knob slider icon here and paste our seed. Now I need to input a negative prompt. I'll use this. Just pause the video if you want to copy this negative prompt. Keep in mind I do not know what the outcome will be. As I mentioned, nothing in this video will be cherry-picked. The output will be the output. This time, we're using the same prompt and settings as our first generation but with a negative prompt added. This shows how negative prompts can change your video generation. Next, we'll explore image to video generation with Pika Labs, one of my favorite methods for creating AI videos. While waiting for this video, I tried Stable Diffusion with the prompt a cyborg video editing on a desktop PC. In my opinion, Stable Diffusion often gives better results. Remember, you can use any AI image generator you like. I prefer Stable Diffusion. Here are the images it created. I like this one, so I'll use it as a base image to guide Pika Labs. I'll drag and drop the image, leave the prompt empty, and hit generate. 
Now that is cool. Here is a cyborg doing some video editing. This is why I love image to video generations with Pico Labs. Clearly, the guided image version is 10x better than the raw prompting results. So now let me add 4 seconds onto this and see what happens. Here are the results. Adding 4 seconds made the total video length 7 seconds. Now let's compare how the upscaling works. You can notice the clarity in the upscaled version, and it doesn't introduce extra artifacts like some other video upscalers do, but the output, to me, looks quite similar to the original. If you didn't upscale the video, I think it would still be okay. It really depends on what you're aiming for. Next, we're going to try video to video. I'll head over to pxels.com, download a video, and use that. I'll drag and drop this video and apply the same prompt, a cyborg video editing on a desktop PC. The video we upload has to be under 10 megabytes, so we need to compress it. For that, I used the website I found here. As you can see, the original video is 14 MBS. I'll click on compress now and download the new compressed video. Nice as you can see, it went from 14 megabytes down to 7 megabytes. Let's try this again. Here are the results. It's not a cyborg, but let's compare it to the original video. Alright, I'm aware my prompt is pretty basic. Tweaking the prompt can really alter the outcome of this video to video generation. So I'll click on the reprompt button and try a more detailed prompt. Full metal cyborg with intricate mechanical details, sitting at a modern desk in a dimly lit room, editing a video on a high-tech futuristic computer. I get it. My prompt is still pretty simple, but let's find out what kind of results we can get by just adding a bit more detail to our prompt. Alright, not too shabby, but personally, I still like the image to video results more. As I mentioned earlier, my prompting could be better, and experimenting with different prompts and styles can lead to better outcomes. Another idea I want to explore is using the modify region feature specifically on this guy's head to give him a full metal cyborg helmet. I'm curious how well this combines real life video with AI video generation through the modify region tool. Let's find out how it turns out. Wow, okay let me see. I'll try adjusting the prompt a bit to something like full metal cyborg helmet, intricate details, mechanical. If this doesn't work I'll move on. It seems like it's just not working as intended right now, but I'm curious to see how expand canvas will work on our original video. So let me go ahead and start over. I'll drag and drop the original video and click on expand canvas. I'll just keep it at the default 1 to 1 ratio. I'll leave the prompt blank and see what happens. Okay so, unlike image to video when it comes to video to video, we will need to enter a prompt. So I'll just describe what this video is since we are just trying to expand the canvas of the original video. So I'll simply enter the prompt man sitting at a desk working on a laptop, let's go. That's interesting, it looks like it altered the entire video instead of just expanding it. I'm not sure if that's the intended outcome, so let's give it another go and see what happens. Yeah, it seems like when we expand, it's actually changing the whole video, not just filling in the expanded section. Let's keep this in mind as we experiment further. I've gone through the basics of Pico Labs 1.0, so I thought it'd be fun to mix things up. I used Stable Diffusion to create a variety of images. I'm excited to use these with the image to video feature in Pico Labs. That's my favorite part of using Pico Labs. The prompts I used were random, just to show off different styles and types of images. After all the images were generated with Stable Diffusion, I went back to Pico Labs and converted them all into videos. And here are the results.